Info Plus for genuine information. Minister, you are welcome to Nepal. Thank you. Welcome to my television show. Thank you very much. You're from teaching background. You spent long time and you took responsibility as a Minister of Education and Workforce Training Portfolio since 2018. What's your purpose of visit here in Nepal at this point of time? I'm very excited. This is my first trip to uh, Nepal and I'm very excited mostly to talk about the Northern Territory and what opportunities it might offer um, the Nepali community in terms of international study but also um, employment opportunities through our, some of our migration um, programs. So that's really the big um, purpose for this visit and we have an international delegation of 13 people from the Northern Territory. Um, we have some industry education and training providers that have come along as well as some of our um, government staff from the Northern Territory government. I'm very fortunate I hold the Ministry for Education, Workforce Training and Aboriginal Affairs uh, and I've been a minister for seven months so it's still quite new in terms of uh, my government and uh, it's, it's really exciting to be here to share the story about the Northern Territory. You've been to Australia yourself uh, and it, Northern Territory is very unique. Uh, it's a very different part of Australia and it's something we want to share with our international community uh, and particularly um, this trip we've visited India for the first couple of days and now we're in Nepal so really looking forward to sharing our Northern Territory story. Okay, Minister, actually, I think it's too early to ask you that, you know, what have you done there in um, Northern Territory, taking a responsibility of Education Minister and Workforce Training, uh, but what you have envisioned, what do you want to do um, there in Northern Territory, and how can we Nepal as assistance for this, and how can Nepal and Northern Territory could work together in future days? Yes, well this trip is really um, about establishing partnerships and communication between some of our contacts that we already have but also finding some new contacts in, in terms of international education opportunities and workforce training. So with my two or well, three portfolios but the two that I'm re here representing uh, the Northern Territory Government is about looking at what partnerships we might be able to provide, we might be able to have some of our training providers come and work with some of your local training providers, um, but also the, um, the reverse, we might have some very skilled professionals in Nepal who would like to come to the Northern Territory to work. We have some skill shortages in the areas of health health services, aged care services, disability services and childcare services. So we'd love to see some of your professionals, if they're looking at a, um, opportunities in Australia, to consider the Northern Territory to come and, and to live and to work. When we talk about Australia, mostly our viewers and uh, especially the parents, they are more familiar about Sydney, Melbourne and other parts of the uh, city. But yeah, of course, Darwin is like the gateway of Australia. What's your message to especially those Nepali parents and students who are planning to go to Australia for, for the study in future days? Yes, that's a, a great question. Why would you pick the Northern Territory if you have places like Sydney and Melbourne, which a lot of As people around the world As they have so many choices, know? which yes. is very... Yes, exactly. Um, I guess one of the big selling points that we want people to consider the Northern Territory to, to work and to also to, to live and study would be it's a very small in terms of population, we have 245,000 people in, in our state, in the Northern Territory. So in terms of the land mass, it's a very small population of Australia, about 1% of Australia's population live in the Northern Territory. The thing that sets us aside is our communities are so small and tight-knit that means that you can come and be part of the community, um, feel welcome. People are very friendly to um, particularly our, our Southeast Asian neighbours to come and, and to live and to work in the, in the Northern Territory of Australia. Um, so I guess the thing I'd like to, people to consider about the Northern Territory is the uh, connectedness to family and friends that people can make. Uh, we have a quite established um, Nepali community in the Northern Territory. They're very active, they're very um, community minded, community driven um, and they would welcome new students and new em employees and employers if, if people are wanting to start up businesses in the Northern Territory. Uh, we welcome that and we have a, a strong community of Nepali people who are already in the Northern Territory. According to the statistics, if I'm right, there are more than 50,000 students already in Australia and this year only um, I asked the data from embassy that more than 20,000 students are going to Australia so number is going very very high at the moment. Yeah. One of the major, major reason to go to Australia is for, for the education and the secondary thing is like part-time job and other settlements. If 
they go to the Northern Territory, apart from other famous cities. What could be other added advantages for the Nepalese students, which, which could be like good opportunity for them? Yes, what would be the bonus of touch studying <laughs> yeah, in the Northern Territory? Uh, well, one of the options that we have is um, opportunities to work while, while students are studying. So we have, uh, firstly, I must say we um, are covered by immigration of Australian government, first and foremost. Um, but in the Northern Territory, we have some options where student, international students can work, either casual or part-time, part which job. is very helpful for yeah, yeah. supporting themselves and possibly even supporting family back here in Nepal. So I think that's a big um, bonus for us for selling to our international students who are thinking to come to the Northern Territory. Um, we have 18% of our international students in the Northern Territory okay. are from Nepal. So we have some really good numbers. 18%? And 18, okay. yes. So, and that, that's been a trend for quite some time. So there's been these strong relationships between the Northern Territory and Nepal. Okay. So looking to, to grow some of those great connections uh, and, and the opportunity that with the right visas, there's opportunities for postgraduate uh, employment as well. So people like living and working in the, ter studying in the Territory, they might look at the long-term opportunity to, um, to stay in the Territory and, and have their families in the Territory. And we definitely, as the Northern Territory government would welcome that if that's something that people were considering. Would you mind to um, let my viewers know about the like what what could be other opportunities for them right after the study uh, because mostly internationally students are looking for the PR or something like that they want to settle after the study is there any any anything that you want to highlight? I'm at glad the you asked that because <laughs> there is something really special um, that we've just had uh, reconfirmed with the Australian government so the Northern Territory government and the Australian government have have an agreement which was signed. It's a Dharma Mark II, which is a designated area migration agreement, and it's the first of its kind in the whole of Australia, and the Northern Territory has it in partnership with the Australian government. Um, and that we, we had it for four years, learnt a lot of lessons about how to attract professionals and semi-professionals to the Northern Territory. Uh, we've gone in and negotiated with the Australian government on how we can further attract more professionals to the Northern Territory uh, to fill some of our employment gaps where we have um, workforce training gaps. And so the Australian government and, and the Northern Territory government signed this agreement, Dharma Mark II, in December last okay. year, 2018. Okay. And that includes the option for after a couple of years of a residence to, uh, sorry, permanent residence pathway. So no other jurisdiction in Australia has that. We, we do in the Northern Territory. I just want to draw attention regarding the recent development of um, a couple of private colleges um, from where Nepalese students, we heard that they are suffered. Would you like to put any remarks on that? Um, I guess one of the main um, things, and I know you'll be speaking to our Australian ambassador shortly about the same topic, um, would be to make sure that um, while the attraction to study overseas and, and particularly in Australia is there, just to make sure that students and families are very vigilant in making sure they do their homework and the history of the providers. Uh, we don't want to have people in the situation of what's happening currently where they are in a difficult place. Um, I definitely say uh, making sure people, even if they've got a provider that they're working through, to make sure they do some of that history. Um, if they're unsure about something, then to go to people like the Ambassador for Australia and the Embassy to ask those questions, whether it's here in, in Nepal or, or over in Australia. Um, please don't feel like you're by yourself because we want people to come and have a great experience, to come out with those high quality Australian qualifications um, through our education system and our education framework. Uh, so we don't want to see any of these type of situation uh, make people think twice about coming. We just want to make sure people think about who the provider is and what they'll offer and if they're not sure to make sure they're asking those questions. Probably it was on 2008, I took an interview with the Australian ambassador here. He was Graham Laid and at that time thousands of Nepali students used to go to Australia, especially on dependent visa. Uh, but you know, it was reported that they, uh, they prepared the fake marriage certificates and later on, you know, Australia um, made the visa rules very very strict at this point of time also I mean there are so many agents they are doing counseling for these students that you know uh, you know probably sometimes this is wrong counseling for these students uh, you know to go to the some some that kind of colleges 
So, but High Commission gave visa. Our Ministry of Education um, gave no objection letter to study there. So I think, don't you think, Minister, there are uh, like um, um, bodies like Australian High Commission and Ministry of Education here have to especially take care of those students so that they get proper counselling and these are the um, right procedures to go to Australia could be like helpful for them. Don't you feel like that? I definitely think that if we're encouraging international students to come and, yes. and live and study in, the, in Australia, um, that we need to have the protection yes. for them as well. And yes. so when there are issues as such as the one that's come up, yes. um, that we do make sure we take the right steps. Our Australian government takes the right steps to ensure that, that yes. our students, our international students are looked after. So yes, I agree at that higher level, um, those conversations are had. And I know that they're being had um, in terms of the Northern Territory government, I'm one step yes, removed. So. Um, but as you can appreciate, um, we. We work in the sense of Australia is a great place to come and study, in particular the Northern Territory. We want to encourage, we want to increase our student, international student numbers to 10,000. Um, and probably from a, a big country in yes. terms of population like Nepal, it, yes. it doesn't sound that big, but for the Northern Territory, we currently have. 2,600 students, international 18%. students. So <laughs> yes, so we would love to see that increase by um, to 10,000 by 2025. Great. Um, and and with our established Nepali community, we'd love to grow that and having those connections where we can make sure that uh, if there are any issues that they're sorted out in a in a very timely and quick fashion because we take it very seriously when we have international students. They're away from their original countries of origin. They're away from their families in some cases. We want them to feel safe. We want them to feel connected and to know that yes. the money that they're spending on the courses that they are looking at um, qualifying for, that that's the right fit for them. So we, we definitely hope that the Australian government will make sure that um, those issues are sorted out in a very timely manner to protect those students. Any message from your side to my viewers? Yes. Um, so one of the numbers that we had given while we've been on this tour of between India and Nepal is there are 89,000 Indian students studying in Australia. And Nepal is third largest. And <laughs> Nepali yes. students is 42,000. 42, so the really great numbers. So what I would encourage any families and, and future students to look at is um, the Northern Territory as yes. an option, as a study destination. Um, but also in those areas that I mentioned, we have um, 117 occupations where we have shortages in the Northern Territory for skilled and semi-skilled okay. professionals and um, the option through the designated area migration agreement for people to possibly work and, and maybe that permanency pathway um, for residents to come to through the Northern Territory if they stay and want to be committed to the Northern Territory there's an option there so I'm very happy to uh, make make people feel welcome when they're coming to the Territory, but knowing we also have a, a strong and ad, an active Nepali community that's already in the that's Northern great. Territory. That's so um, you won't be by yourself, uh, even if you're travelling on your yeah. own or studying on your own, there'll be people in the community that will make you feel connected and, and make sure that you're looked after. Very safe, welcoming, diverse, multicultural part of Australia where you are really part of the community and you're not just a number on a piece of paper or a statistic on yes. a computer in one of the bigger cities. Um, you actually become quite quite connected and part of the community in the Northern Territory. So I'd love for more Nepali people to choose the Northern Territory to study or to work. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Pleasure meeting you. Thank you. InfoPlus for genuine information.